All right, so pre-calculus uh, 30, um, in our textbook, uh, page 332, we're starting the next unit, unit 3, and unit 3 talks about exponential functions and logarithmic functions, all right? So we are going to talk about special types of functions called exponential and logarithmic, and um, I guess here is just a little bit of an intro. You can read some of this stuff. How much will your bank deposit be worth in five years? If it's compounded monthly, all right, so we're talking about, you know, an exponential uh, sort of function there. How will your car loan payments change as you pay them down? Uh, how acidic will water be? That's a logarithmic, and so on. How thick should the walls of this spacecraft right here be in order to protect this lady right here from cosmic radiation? So all of these things, uh, the work of biologists and different things, testing pH and stuff, there's the other... Here's the other astronaut. That looks like he's in zero gravity or something. Anyways, um, that looks like a filter of some sort. That looks like platelets and uh, some kind of artery or something. And, of course, we've got movies, all right? Box office sales, revenues, costs, all this sort of thing. So we've talked about a lot of functions. We're going to explore exponential functions today. So Chapter 7 is Exponential Functions. And what I would like to do is for you to look at, here's the first page. Um, I guess look at this. Uh, this is a, uh, um, an ancient problem, okay? Uh, now, I, I, yeah, so let's read this real quick. It says, the following ancient fable from India has several variations, but uh, each makes the same point. So, so here, look at this chessboard, okay? And on the first chess... Uh, board space there, there's one grain of rice. Okay. When the creator of the game of chess showed his invention to the ruler of the country, the ruler was so pleased that he gave the inventor the right to name his prize for its invention. The man, who was very wise, asked the king that he be given one grain of rice for the first square of the chessboard, two for the second, four for the third, and so on. The ruler quickly accepted the inventor's offer, believing the man had made a mistake for not asking for four. Now, if the number of grains double every time, you can quickly see how this adds up. And if we have all of these spaces and we're doubling every time, right, that is an immense amount. So when we try and identify what the relationship is here between the growth here, this is actually exponential growth. So the 30-second square would be... Uh, <laughs> The amount of rice that would cover a span of, uh, to be a cone here, that would be 8 meters wide and 4.7 meters high. So this guy actually did ask for a lot. Okay, and that's just the one on the, the last square. Now, these other squares aren't going to add up to much, right? But it's going to start getting pretty big. So the final, final amount of rice is approximately equal to the volume of uh, a mountain 140 times tall as Mount Everest. Okay, so this is an example of how things can grow exponentially. What exponential function can be used to model this situation? So anyone know, uh, I don't know, even know how much you know about exponential functions, but does anyone know what the exponential function would be to represent the number of grains of sand as they kind of increase? Y equals, we're doubling every time. We're doubling every time. So let's just go to the notes here, okay? An exponential function has this form. Okay, so you can write this down, and we'll come back to that question. This is the form, y equals, this c right here is some constant, okay? So normally, in other functions, the x value is, you know, one of the numbers or one of the values that's multiplied or added or something like that, or taken to a, a power that is a constant, right? But in this case, in an exponential function, the x is in the exponent position. That's what makes a function an exponential function. All right, so this is a quadratic function. This, we flip those two around, that's an exponential function, see that? The input variable, the independent variable, is in the exponent position. Now, if we talk about doubling the grains of rice every time, we make a little table of values. Tony, wakey wakey. Thank you. We start with one grain. On the first square, we have one grain. Okay? On the second square, we have two grains. 
Okay, on the third square, we have um, how many grains? Four. Okay. So as we move as we move up by one each time, what happens to these? They double. Okay. So if we are doubling, we're basically taking um, these doubles here. If you write all these down, just forget about these for now. But if we write all these down, okay, these are all powers of what? So what would the base be for these all of these numbers? Two. It is actually. Uh, even one, right? That's two to the power of zero. Okay? So if you called this, and I'm just going to shift this around a little bit. If we called this the uh, zero square, okay, the one we're initially starting on, you have one grain. And on the first square after that, you have two, and so on then maybe this makes a little bit more sense to you. That this y, I'll change colors here, y value is equal to the number 2 taken to the power of x. So 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. 2 to the power of 1 equals 2. 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. 2 to the power of 4 equals 16, and so on. You see that? So when x is a power, you get an exponential function. Are we good with that? If it tripled every time, what would the function be? y equals 3 to the power of x. Okay? Get that? If the number of grains tripled every time, if 3 was the factor, see we're multiplying by 2 every time here, so that means that 2 is the base. If we multiplied by 3 every time, well, this would be another power of 3, another power of 3, another power of 3. You see? So that's the base. Now, this will become more clear as we move through. But what I want to do right now is make sure you have this written down. Okay, that C is a constant. X is in the exponent position. Super important. Okay, that's the big deal here. I am going to show you some graphs. Okay? So this is Desmos here. You guys are familiar with this. I've used this before. And what I have here is I have, now I'm just going to maybe undo this. Here is your y equals 2 to the power of x. Okay, that's what the graph looks like. Now, why, how, how does that work? Well, where's, where's 1? 1 is right there. If x is 1, then y equals 2. Why is that? Because if you have... Um, uh, if you have, uh, where are we, right here. So 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So you go over 1, you go up 2. What's 2 to the power of 2? Well, that would be 4. See that? And 2 to the power of 3 would be 8, way up there. See? There. Come on. 2 to the power of, where are you, 3. Whatever, 8. Okay? Now, what about in the negative region here? So, 2 to the power of negative 1. What's 2 to the power of negative 1? Well, negative 1 would be here. So, what am I looking at? That is 1 half. Does that make sense? Does 2 to the power of negative 1 equal 1 half? Well, it's not on our list here, but 2 to the power of negative 1. You guys should know from grade 10 or before, that negative exponents actually mean to take the reciprocal of this. If we if we take the reciprocal of this, it makes that exponent positive, which of course is one half. Right? What's two to the power of negative two? That's one over two squared, which is one over four. So go back to our graph. And if we have x equals negative 2, what's this value here? Ooh, 1 quarter, 0.25. So as we go back further and further and further, we're getting, um, you know, larger and larger negative values, okay? So if we take a look, really zoom in really close, it looks like it's pretty close to 0. And of course it is, right? Pretty close to 0 0.011. But 2 to the power of negative 6... Which, where is negative 6? Right here. What's 2 to the power of negative 6? 
Well, what's 2 to the power of 6? 2 to the power of 5 is... Okay, 2 to the power of 4 is... 16. 2 to the power of 5 is... 32. 2 to the power of 6 is... 64. So that's 1 64. Okay? My question is, to you, when will this red line actually get to 0? Because we can see that it's going to, going to 0. What do you mean, never? Look at it. No, look at it. It's going to 0. Right? Like, when is it going to hit zero? It's just going to be an eventuality, isn't it? No. You're shaking your head rather confidently over there. Okay, why will it not... You, look, at that's pretty much zero there, right, guys? Two to the power of about negative maybe 15 is going to be zero, right? Yes, I'm seeing some heads nod. See? Some people are agreeing with me. <laughs> well, let's just check. Okay. You seem pretty confident. Okay. 2 to the power of, and I'm guessing about negative 15 is going to be pretty much 0. So that is hmm, not 0. Pretty close. Hmm. Well, maybe it's 2 to the power of negative 15. That's got to be it. Huh. Pretty close. Pretty close. 1 to, times 10 to the negative uh, 15. Whoops, I didn't do negative. So it would be negative. Oh, okay, forget it. 2 to the power of, let's put that in there, negative 50 is 8 times 10 to the negative 16. So, it is correct. Good job. Let's try and fool you. But, it will never be 0. Okay, if we go back to this, and I zoom back out. Let's see, where do I hit? Control. Zoom back out over here. Where are we going? Look at that. This will approach 0, but it will never actually hit 0. Because 2 to the power of some number will never be 0. Okay? All right, so that's good. We've covered a little bit of that, so that's great. Um, so domain and range. Can we talk about domain and range now? Because it seems we're kind of on that topic. What's the domain of this exponential function? So where are there any values for x that are not allowed or that, that don't yield a y value? Well, the negative... Okay, x values are this these ones, left, right? The horizontal axis. So can we go to negative a billion if we wanted to? Is that a problem? It's going to be super small, but we could do it. So there's no limit here. What about up here? It looks like we have no graph after this, right? No, of course you guys aren't that silly. 2 to the power of 10. <laughs> two to the hey, be nice. 2 to the power of 10. Okay, now if I zoom out, yes, of course, 2 to the power of 10, which would be right around here somewhere, is going to be a very large number, but it's still a number. 2 to the power of 250 is still a very large number, right? So there is no limit. The domain is XER, okay? The domain for an exponential function is XER. Now, what about the domain for an exponential function that we're looking at right now? What appears to be the, sorry, the range? What about the range for this function? Okay, above zero, you're saying, okay? It appears to be above zero. I would agree with you. For this exponential function, y equals 2x, the range is greater than, is it or equal to? Will it be? No, it's not going to be zero, right? So greater than zero, okay? Now, there may be a case, a future, where we will come into the negatives, but the shape of an exponential function is just like this, and you're right. The range for this function is greater than zero. Awesome. Okay, that's domain and range. Maybe we should take a second to, uh, to jot that down. Okay, uh, exponential, exponential functions. So domain is XER, range, Y greater than zero. Now I put a little asterisk there because we'll talk a little bit more about when that range is not this. Okay, there is some cases. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to Desmos. And I'm going to light up um, this graph as well. Now this is where the C value is 2. It's the same as 2 to the power of X or 2 to the power of X. If I move the C value and it becomes greater than 2, how do you think this is going to change? Any predictions? It'll be more, sorry? It'll be steeper, okay. It'll be steeper, all right. Anybody else? Any guesses? So what if it was 3? Three? 3 to the power of 1 is what? 3, all right. So already it's going to be up here and not at 2, it's going to be at 3. That make sense? So 3 to the power of, two, of 3 is going to be Whoa, 27. So I think, I think you may be right in saying that it's going to be a little steeper. So let's just see. Oh, where's it going? It's coming up steeper. There we go. Y equals 3. 
Let's zoom in on that. Okay. Interesting. Steeper here. What about over here? What does that make sense or what? I don't know. Yeah, it is. It's generally steeper, I guess. Yeah. We have the same domain. We have the same range. What else is the same? The y intercept is the same. Now, why would that y intercept be the same? Because any real number other than 0 to the power of 0 is 1, right? 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. What if I had 4 to the power of 0? That would be bum, 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 a 1. Surely 16 to the power of 0 is going to be... Di it's not going to be. Okay. It's the same. See that? So, 4 to the power of x. 16 to the power of x. Yes, steeper. Now, if we take a look at 16, look at this. Um, 16 to the power of negative 1 is... 1 16th. It's very small. Versus uh, 2 to the power of negative 1, right, is 1 half. So if you have a larger C value, yeah, these are going to drop really quickly as you go back from 0, right? So that's generally what it looks like. And let's just deselect those. So this one, and here we go. This is what happens when I just kind of let it play. So as it gets closer and closer to, you know, larger numbers, it kind of gets steeper. What happens when it comes back down? Okay. What's going to happen? Where is it going to end up? It's going to start to flatten out. And then what happens? Okay, what's going to happen next? It seems to be sort of flattening out. What's going to happen? Sorry? It's going to turn into a logarithm. Oh, we're throwing logarithms out there, are we? It's turned into a logarithm. Okay, maybe. Any other ideas? Any other ideas? Y, y intercept. Okay, y axis reflection. Okay, a reflection of the y axis. Okay, so like this green one here, it it, be, it seems to be coming more flat. Is it ever going to be a flat line? No, I don't think so. Okay, and then you said something about a reflection. Let's 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 keep playing this. See what happens. Whoa! Oh, look at this. When C is one, da -da -da, we have a flat line. We do have a horizontal line. <laughs> and now you're kind of laughing because, yeah, think about it. One to the power of anything is always going to be one. So no matter what your x value is, your y value will always be one. So y equals one to the power of x is the same as y equals one. Okay. But what's interesting is what happens when C is less than zero. This is kind of our next step here. Okay? And um, you were absolutely correct, Sarah, in saying that we have a reflection happening. Look at this. This is 0.5 to the power of x. This red one is 2 to the power of x. So when we take the reciprocal of C, we get its reflection, both the y-axis. Okay? So look at what about... What about one third? Hmm. What if I made this to 0.33? Right? That's one third. 0.333. Look at that now. If I deselect the two, look at that. See? They are exact reflections. Got it? All right. So, what kind of notes should we make here? Well, let's say that um, when C is greater than 1. We have an increasing exponential function. And of course that, that looks like this. Right? It's increasing. And this is uh, when you hear in the textbook or read in the textbook X O. Oh my goodness. Um, can't talk and write at the same time sometimes. Exponential growth. Right. We talked about the bank account. We talk. We can talk about the bacteria popula population doubling or whatever, growing at a certain rate. Talk about the grains of rice on the chessboard growing. That's exponential growth. And that's when your C value is greater than one. So, 
when the C value is between 0 and 1, and that's how you would write that in this notation, between 0 and 1, we have a decreasing function. So just like that reflection that we spoke of, decreasing. So this would be represented uh, by you know, exponential decay. Let's say. You guys know what half-life means? It's a science term. You know what it means? Half-life is exponential decay as well. Anyone know? Anybody know? Anybody on this side of the room? We hear a lot, a, lot of, a lot of stuff from this side of the room. Anybody on this side of the room know? No? Okay, science term. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for a radioactive element to spontaneously decay into half its original mass. And I'm not going to write that down. Okay. Find more about that in science, chemistry, physical science. So half-life is the... If you even write down, if you want, I'm not writing it down. Okay is the amount of time that it takes a radioactive element to spontaneously decay to half its original mass. So, um, radioactive decay means that literally an unstable uh, atom would basically disintegrate, start to disintegrate, and it would turn into something else. And over time, there's some kind of predictable rate for all these uh, things, and a half-life is how many time, how many days, seconds, years, months, whatever, it would take for this to spontaneously decay. So, that's an example of exponential decay. Alright, what's next? Okay, let's take a look at an example from our text. Alright, so this is an example here that we're going to take a look at, and it's, uh, this example says, write an exponential function, given the graph of the function, and of course, some few, a few key points here. Okay, so what function in this form, y equals c to the power of x, can be used to describe the graph shown? All right. Well, the first thing you want to notice is that this is a, an increasing or decreasing graph. What is it? Decreasing. Good. So we expect the c value to be between 0 and 1. Okay, it's going to be a fraction between 0 and 1. The question is, what is that, um, that constant base? So what you do with the points then is you can just quickly kind of jot them down. So we have, um, it doesn't matter which order you go either, negative 2 and 16, right? Those are the points, the one point that's shown, negative 1 and 1 quarter. Ah, that's wrong. Negative 1 and 4, and 0 and 1, okay? So now you think this through and you go, y equals some base to the power of x. Right? So 16 equals some base to the power of negative 2. Hmm. Okay. Now, what base is going to go in there? At the same time, 4 has to equal the same base to the power of negative 1. Okay. Or, think about this 1 over this base to the power of 1. Okay? And you know it's going to be a fraction. So what is the fraction? Is it uh, 1 half? Is it 1 quarter? Is it 1 something else? What's your guess? What would make these statements true? What base? Oh, well, we could try a few. What about 1 half? Does that make sense? 1 half to the negative 2. Okay, you would flip that so does 16 equal 2 to the power of positive 2? No. It doesn't. So do you see how 1 half is not the base? 1 over 4. Let's try 1 over 4. Does this make sense? 1 over 4 to the negative 1 is actually 4 to the power of positive 1. Does this equal that? Wow, it does. Let's go back here. 16, does that equal 1 over 4 to the power of negative 2? Well. That's going to be 4 to the power of positive 2. We have a winner. You see that? 
Make sense? Uh, is there another way of doing that? Mm, yes, but it involves... Well, the algebraic way is going to involve logarithms, which I'm not showing you right now. Let's save that for later. Okay? So I know, I know, I know. You want the fastest, less, least painful way of doing everything. I get it. Me too. Uh, and my response to that is too bad. So sad. For you. Okay? So uh, this, this helps you understand, though, okay? We're, we're putting pieces together, right? You know it's decreasing. So you know it's going to be a fraction. What fraction is it? Well, it, should, it shouldn't be that hard. You should be able to look at this and right away. Hey, with this one right here, okay? Something to the power of negative 1 is 4. Well, it's not 4 to the negative 1. It's got to be a fraction. 1 quarter. Flip it, you get 4. All right? So that's going to go pretty quick for you now. All right. What else? We're going to... Um, Running out of time just a little bit, I was going to maybe direct your attention to this example in the textbook. It's sort of a, uh, and this is a really good one, and maybe we need to work into this kind of question. But this is a, a real life problem. It talks about half life here, okay? And it gives you this graph. And it asks you at some point to look at the graph to get some information from it. But it says also write the exponential decay model for this right here, all right? Now, that may be a little bit tougher uh, for you to do, okay, but given this information. So, maybe we won't tackle this right now, all right, um, but this is something that, uh, you know, you should be able to look at and, and do. Now, obviously, this graph looks like it's shifted over from the type of graphs. We're like, oh, no, it's not. There's one right there. So, this is a regular exponential graph because there's one, okay. So, you should be able to do this one here, too, eventually, but I'll, I'll let you come back to this one, okay? We won't this one right now, but you can go ahead and give it a try at any time here, and, and uh, uh, just actually, I'll show you the answer in a few seconds, so. Something to the power of 1 is 0.5. <laughs> okay, maybe this isn't as tough, right? Something to the power of 2 is 0.25, or 1 quarter. All right, there you go. 1 half, yes. 1 half to the power of 1 is 1 half. Okay. Sorry, I psyched you out a little bit there. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, what else is on my... All right, so we're getting... Hey, here we go. Key ideas. Let's wrap it up here. Key ideas. Okay, so what do we know? This is an increasing function. C value is greater than 1. This is a decreasing function. C value is between 0 and 1. Awesome. When C is exactly 1, that's the same as Y equals 1. That's a horizontal line. That's not increasing or decreasing. These functions, these basic functions, just like this, y equals c to the power of x, a domain that's x as an element of all real numbers. The range greater than 0. y greater than 0. Oh, I didn't explicitly mention this, but there's always one y-intercept, and that is y equals 1. There's never more than one y-intercept, because it's a function, so you can't double back onto that axis. But y equals 1 always for these, um, for this, in this format here. And the horizontal asymptote, now I didn't expressly uh, mention this either, but the sort of the horizontal line that the graph approaches but never touches or crosses, that's called an asymptote. An asymptote. You may have heard that before. The horizontal asymptote is sort of that baseline that the graph approaches as x either gets really large or really small, but it never touches or crosses, and that's y equals. All right, so that's pretty much the end of the lesson. It's a good thing, too. Lewis, wake up. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm starting to fall asleep. So. And we end this lesson. Any questions?